Welcome back everybody to another installment in the D3 Lab X64 video playlist. This video is going to be focused on the image and text label generators and the 3D print support generator, as well as quickly circling back to the model builder just for a couple additional notes. The first thing we'll do is we'll quickly base the opposing arch that we had from earlier. Uh, the reason we're doing that is just so we have something that we can put those uh, freshly generated image and text labels on. Um, also, we're going to point out one quick thing at this initial step when you do load the model builder. Uh, there's a checkbox there that says model already oriented. Um, what this does is if you are certain that your model's already in the proper orientation, you know, the occlusal up, anterior teeth down, um, you've been doing a lot of models, you can check that box and it will skip those first several steps of orienting the model. Um, once you do several of these, you kind of start to loathe uh, orienting models that are already oriented. So I put that in there just as uh, a feature for, for people that use this on a regular basis, and it will save you the trouble of having to do those first three steps. So, I mean, it's not much, but uh, any type of improvement in the workflow, I feel like why not just included in there. So um, that's what that checkbox is for. And again, its default is off. So even if you really didn't know what you were doing, you kind of have to go out of your way to, to screw something up with the orientation. Um, but it's included there for those of us that uh, do this on a regular basis. So I just wanted to point that out and I'll speed up here through the rest of this process. Okay, the model has been built. And uh, this time we chose to do a hollow. It looks good. Um, if we were uh, wanting to get this model back into its original occlusion, we could run the align model tool like we did in a, in a previous video. Um, but for this particular video, um, we're focusing on the uh, image and text label generators and the 3D print support generator. So it's not necessary to do that. Um, we'll go ahead and start with the uh, image label generator because it is something that is brand new. Um, in D3 Mesh, you can only do text labels. Uh, now in D3 Lab, you have the ability to do both text and image labels. That includes logos, pictures, pretty much anything. The image label generator works just like the text label generator in that it creates these stencils and then it creates these labels from those stencils that then you can apply to any model within Mesh Mixer. What this means is that we're held to certain constraints within Mesh Mixer itself. Uh, as it turns out, generating these stencils and getting a nice looking high resolution uh, text label or image label, um, it takes quite a bit of uh, finessing the picture to get it exactly right. One of the first videos I ever posted on this channel was how to manually emboss text and high resolution images on dental models. Um, so you can check out that video to get uh, a little bit more of an idea of what it takes to, uh, to get that uh, image looking really nice on, on a manual level and what some of those constraints actually are. Uh, just to quickly summarize, uh, if the background of the image is black. Uh, Mesh Mixer takes that as transparent. So um, let's just say you had a white or any scale of gray object or text. If the background was black, the text or object, since it's not black, it's white or gray, um, it will protrude up and it will look normal. If the reverse was true, if the background of the image was white, but the text or uh, image or whatever was black, then what you would see is a label that had the background protruding up with the uh, image or text kind of left behind. So there's a feature on here to uh, invert the background color if you know that your uh, if, if you know that your image has a black background or a white background, uh, you can manually invert that uh, to what you'd like. Uh, just on the fly. You don't have to do any editing on your own. I have that included uh, in the software. It also does uh, several other things that get it to uh, Mesh Mixer's liking, including making it square, uh, making it a decent enough resolution to do these embossings, and uh, some other kind of fine detail work. So 
Uh, there's a lot actually that's kind of going on in the background there. It doesn't just take the picture and then stamp it right on the uh, that little square object. Uh, it does a lot of refining to the image before it even gets to the stencil portion. So um, just kind of wanted to point that out so you know exactly how the tool's working and why some results may be happening to uh, the images that you're using. Uh, but generally speaking, um, it works with almost, like I said, any image that you give it because I try to normalize each image that comes in. Uh, like I said, make it into that square, uh, grayscale it, and uh, make it all, uh, all the images basically the same. So they all look um, uh, consistent on the image label. Getting back to the tool itself, you start by clicking on the tool name in the uppermost part of the D3 Lab uh, tool menu. You're always presented the option of loading an existing label if you've already created one. That will save you from going through all these steps of generating a new one uh, every single time. Um, in the case that you're creating a new one, uh, you're uh, given the option to load a file. Uh, these are all the different files I've kind of tested with and used before. Different shapes, sizes, colors, uh, rectangles, squares, high resolution, black and white, kind of all the different things. I'm just going to choose this one for right now. If you'll notice, the background on that is white. Um, and if we're using the knowledge that we just uh, talked about, uh, it makes sense to check this box that says invert colors to ensure that the background is black and maintains that transparent appearance so the label looks a little bit better. So I'm going to check that box and just hit next. We'll go through all the same steps uh, in appearance to the text label generator. And you don't want to be moving your mouse at all during this uh, portion of the tool. Uh, it does a lot of series of clicks and things like that in order to get this uh, stencil stamped on there correctly. So you just want to kind of stay off the mouse for this part, let it do its thing. And then after uh, the step is completed, then you can go back to uh, using the mouse again, just so you don't interrupt anything on accident. And so you'll, you'll notice here that the, the logo that I used was kind of rectangular in shape. So in order to get this to look normal as an image label, um, part of the processing is making that into a square. So the top and bottom part of that were buffered uh, with some, some blank area there. So the label itself went from kind of a certain size to a little bit smaller because we had to add that buffer on the top and bottom. Um, so you need to keep some of those things in mind. You can alter the way your image looks uh, to get the best results possible. But again, this was just downloaded straight from the internet and just used on the fly. At this point, it's asking you to uh, select a, a part of the model where you want to add the image label to. I'm going to click on the heel here and then just press Next. Uh, because this image label is such a high resolution uh, model, as it turns out, um, it does take a little bit of time here for it to load up and to attach to the model. Uh, don't be concerned if it kind of hangs there for a little bit. Eventually it will pop up and we have our model there uh, and we just need to kind of get it in the approximate location of where we want it, kind of resize it. And once we're satisfied with how that looks, we can just hit the finish button there. And we have our first image label. So that looks pretty good there. Um, when that 3D prints, it'll look nice, but I'm noticing right on the edge of where that label hits the model, there's a tiny little defect that was developed. Every once in a while, that does happen. Um, so you may want to double check with the inspector uh, when you're done doing these, these labels. Uh, to fill those holes. The way you do that is just hit the I button with nothing selected and uh, it will pull up the inspector tool, auto repair all, done. And even if you didn't do that, I think most printing softwares would just fill that in for you automatically when you imported it. But uh, just so you know how to fix it in Mesh Mixer, that's how you would do that. And that's looking pretty good. So then we can move on to the text label generator, which is 
uh, virtually identical to the way it was in D3 Mesh. We'll go through that one time just to make sure uh, we can all see the workflow. Again, it asks you if you have an existing label or not. At this point, we don't. We're making a new one. Uh, we can enter in some text here. There is a new button uh, down at the bottom there. It says load image file. So in case you have mistakenly uh, started a text label and then you realize you want to do an image instead, you can click that button and it will bring you into the uh, image label generator tool. But this is our, our quick label here. We're going to hit next and at that prompt we're just going to hit the space bar and just let go of the mouse. Again, part of this is uh, controlling the mouse to do certain clicks and, and things like that uh, with the stencil. So uh, you just kind of got to back off just for a second, let it do its thing. And I think in future uh, updates to this particular tool, uh, the things that would be easiest to do would be add fonts and uh, bold, italic, you know, things like that. All that's built into the, the programming language, just a matter of kind of listing those options and applying them and things like that. So um, that could be a future update if people are interested. You just kind of got to let me know in the comments if that's something you really want. Um, so we're doing the same thing we did with the image label generator. We're just selecting a spot on the model where we want this label to be. We'll put it on the other heel. This should be a little bit quicker than the uh, image label generator label because it's not as high as a resolution. So I'm not sure if that was any quicker or not, but it should be. And same thing applies here. We just need to orient it, size it. Once we are happy with the way that it looks, uh, we can use the finish button over in the D3 lab uh, software. So that's done. We have the two labels there. And what's nice there um, that most people may not notice is that this label wraps around all the contours of the model. So in some solutions, when you're trying to add text or, or something like that to a model, it won't maintain that same curvature. It will look really funny or won't work well. Um, so it's actually a, a, a kind of a, a neat little benefit that's uh, unintended with that, the way the label tender or the label generator works. So then we'll get into the 3D print support generator. This is really straightforward. If you know anything about um, Mesh Mixer itself, it has all this built in anyway. So I'm just kind of utilizing what is already existing and just kind of making it into a, an easier. Uh, workflow for, for most dentists and, and the average user, uh, specifically for, for people that have the resin printers. So the default values typically in, in Mesh Mixer with the support generator um, are meant for like FDM printers and extruding type systems, um, not necessarily for the fine detail work that we need with, uh, um, with our resin printers. Now they do have some presets for, for some resin printers, but I found that they're a little I don't know, a little wonky. Um, so the settings that I put here, um, the default settings at least, should work for the vast majority of cases. You can tinker with those settings if you want, but in general, you can just go next, 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 all the way through, and it should give you what you need. Uh, this first button here on the initial start of the tool, it says uh, auto orient. So this is, again, another function within Mesh Mixer that takes the model that you have, and it attempts to orient it to the printing build plate in, in such a way that it reduces the amount of overhangs to the maximum ability. Um, that's built into Mesh Mixer. So um, I just utilize that function. And in this case, it looks like it just wants it flat. I kind of get some on and off results with this. 
Um, I feel like it, a lot of the time it just defaults to this flat, uh, but a lot of the time it will kind of angle it in the exact way that you'd see in like preform or something like that. So um, you can also manually do this as well if you know that, hey, I want this angled and uh, kind of just want it at this height above the build plate, then yeah, you can do that manually before you get going. You hit next to, to actually start the tool up here. And this is just where you uh, input any of the uh, parameters that you want to change um, from the default. And I'm kind of noticing that one, the very bottom parameter here, I can't really see that well. Um, so it's something I'm gonna have to go back in and change the spacing on just as, uh, with those text boxes. But uh, even if I didn't do that, which I will, <laughs> um, you can you can still kind of click in that box and, and change it. Yeah, I can see what I'm doing right there. You can kind of click in there and change it if you really wanted to. So you can access it, but um, I will go back and, and change that spacing. So uh, there's just a few options here. If you go through the manual support generating tool through Mesh Mixer itself, I mean, there's like 40 or 50. There's a ton of different options. So I narrowed it down to just like these four or five or six maybe uh, key uh, parameters, and you can change those as you'd like, and we'll generate what we need for uh, 3D printing with the majority of our uh, resin printers. So that's the end result there. It's not perfect again. Um, you know, I don't really like those, those little supports that are kind of by themselves connecting the model to the model, um, but uh, I guess this would be like in a pinch, at least, at least you got this, you know, and this is a fairly complex model, you know. Um, if you had uh, the virtual vacuum forming uh, object that we created in the earlier video, and you flip that kind of with the exterior side down, and then you ran this tool, I think it would be a very simple looking support tree, and it would print very cleanly. Same thing with probably provisional crowns and things like that. Um, this is just a hollowed model um, with some weird geometry so uh, the tool kind of creates these extra little supports in places that don't really need to be there uh, but either way it's it's a again a really good starting point for for a lot of uh, the supports needed for for 3d printing so um, that's the 3d print support tool and then we went over the image label generator and the text label generator um, i really appreciate taking the time to watch this video um, we're kind of getting to the end of, of the majority of the features uh, that exist currently in T3 Lab. Um, but again, thank you so much for your time and uh, have a wonderful night. I'll talk to you later.